Hello, everybody. Happy Sunday evening. Um, sorry for my tardiness. I'm going to give you some time to get logged in. Um, and collect my thoughts because my, my mind has been going a hundred different ways. Which is always the reason for... Um, is brought in by the the uh, hello Tracy. It's brought in by um, the enemy, distraction. As I say a, a while back, distraction comes from the word where they used it in the medieval times of saying um, people were tied to to four different places or horses, and they were literally distracted, meaning being pulled apart being pulled in various different ways and ever since i've heard that uh, being the history teacher me i guess i don't know it just caught with me it just spoke to me and i know that often when i feel like i am distracted i know you fight you don't fight distraction by by uh closing things off to say because this world's going to do what it wants to do and the enemy especially will send numerous things your way hello gina and you are still called to focus now that's where it's important where is your focus where is your eyes um and if they are on christ then you fight that distraction by focusing on god in christ jesus it's not about pushing things away because you can't you can't do that because you're you're then focused on the outside right it's focusing in and keeping your eyes on christ says the guy that's <laughs> whoo um I, I literally have issues with my attention but ever since the lord has renewed my heart has renewed my mind um it's, it's, it still hasn't gotten easier to say because now I feel like it's the enemy um, working towards me or trying to pull me in different ways. And uh, and that's only because he doesn't want me to, to, to follow the path that I'm on. So uh, tonight we're going to talk about gratitude. With Thanksgiving coming up uh, this Thursday, I thought it would be a cool thing to... Um, share i'm also going to share a free ebook at the end that i'm going to be reading from uh it's from charles stanley so i'm going to share some from that and uh yeah but kind of as our devotional today i'm going to say it. i'm going to read from psalm 23 i say that because if you're not aware um on tuesday nights tuesday evenings um my my ministry inspirations, uh, we have implemented a digital community uh, that is called Christ Digital, okay? And uh, you go to ChristDigital.live and you can join us. Anybody can join us on Tuesday nights. We start at 7 p.m. Central, 8 Eastern, um, and all are welcome. And we're about to start a four-week series, I believe, on Psalm 23, um, focusing in on the word verse by verse by verse. And uh, it's one of my favorite psalms. And I thought I'll read from that tonight. And uh, maybe that'll calm my anxious mind because I have a lot to share tonight. So I promise to get you off by the time that you need to get off by <laughs> to watch Yellowstone. I'm not going against that because I know... I know so well. If if you're with me, um, I'm trying to do this. Can you share this for me? Um, Gina, I know you're on there. Uh, if you can share that with me, uh, share that with others, that'd be great. So, Psalm 23, the Lord is my spirit. Or, whoop. I know my kids are going wild behind me, Satan. All right. I don't know what spooked them, but anyways, I'm back. 
The Lord is my shepherd. Psalm 23, a Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That brought some peace just reading that. Um, so I'm just going to break that down a little bit. Um, but each week we're going to meet and we, we, we spend about an hour. So an hour of your time. It's very easy to join. It's a lot like Zoom, but uh, easier than Zoom to, to join in. Anybody can with the link. So I'll put that in um, the, the comments after this. And uh, we love for you to join. I really would. Um, wherever you're at on your journey. Um, let me tell you, you know, I keep, I keep um, getting people, they get interested to say, and then they're like, I don't know if I'm at the point where I could do that. And I'm like, you don't have to do anything. You just have to be there. And I think a lot of times that's what keeps us away from truly accepting Christ because we feel like, you know, we're going to have to do all these things. And that's ultimately what God's not doing. He is, he's coming to your life so that you can be um, done unto. Like he's going to work inside of you. He's going to clean out all the junk, all the things that are covering your light, hindering your path, um, burdening you. He's going to clear those. And he's going to give you a new heart, not of stone, but of flesh. And he's going to renew your spirit. He's going to give you a spirit that is going to constantly renew you from inside out. And what you do and how, what you desire and how you do things and for your your reasons for doing things change you're 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 just you're living from a endless source of abundance of peace and joy and and um uh peace joy happiness um and also there is some suffering just little asterisk when you choose to follow the lord it's it's uh, it's not always easy so I just want to encourage you, like, if you feel disconnected, or you maybe never felt that connection, maybe it's because that you have not been uh, ready to receive that. I want to share this verse with you um, before I go on. No man can come to me, said our Lord, except the Father which hath sent me to draw him. What he's saying is the Father puts it on our heart. He, he pursues us. He calls us. Now, if it's up to us to answer that call. And, you know, God is patient. But God God's going to let, he's free will too. God's going to let you ignore that call. I mean, he can't make you pick up the phone, if you know what I mean. He can't remake you, make you respond. But often I found where God calls, it's often because the rest of the world isn't calling. It's this period of isolation to, to a degree, a wilderness. And, it's, and he's showing and reminding you that, that um, he is what you're seeking. And um, so anyways, we have to be in a place to receive. 
And what's, what saddens me is when people go through this life, they go through dark times. They, they suffer. They, they walk alone. And that is the time where it's best to find the Lord. And it doesn't take the suffering away, but it allows you to, to go through it, to, to get on the other side. You can't go over, you can't go under. It, the way is through. And what happens is he walks with you through that. He brings people into your life that's not going to hinder you, but it's going to support you and encourage you and walk with you because, hey, you know, we once walked in darkness. Hey, we sometimes still do. And the others that are looking out for us to say or looking uh, in a part of our life, they're going to say, hey, Jay, we're over here, bud. We're following Christ and you're over here. You're right. I'm taking my eyes off. That's a good shepherd. And that's the cool thing about community. It's not to 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 uh, fit in rules or uh, to 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 make you do a lot of things, but it's to allow you to walk with Christ through the things that are um, causing you pain. All right, so let's go. Okay, I gotta go back to Psalms 23 for a minute, sorry. But I was, I was about to talk about that. It says, um, the shadow... And uh, 23.4, um, sorry, 23.1, this, this whole Psalm 23, the Psalm describes God in two ways, as the shepherd who cares for the sheep, in verses 1 through 4, and as the host who cares for his, de his guest, verses 5 through 6. In worship, the faithful celebrate God's greatness and majesty. He is the shepherd for Israel as a whole, and for each faithful Israelite as well. And going into two of my favorite parts is this. I mean, this whole song I love, but he, he, it just takes me to this place of peace. You know, he's our shepherd. We are his sheep. And, and there's something about that. It's very important to know who your shepherd is. Or you could be following a shepherd <laughs> that is not, Jesus, one that is uh, clothed in the wolf clothing, to say, uh, I said that wrong, but you know what I mean, and one that doesn't care. See, God went after the one that was lost. He said, 90, 99 and a half won't do for me. <laughs> I want all 100. Now, a shepherd of this world, a shepherd for what they can get out of people and what they can do for others and what others can do for them, they don't care to say. So one of the favorite things uh, about this is five through six. He says, the psalm now describes a faithful person as God's guest at a meal. The enemies are powerless to prevent the enjoyment of God's general, generous hospitality. It's like all these enemies are getting at you and and they they can't keep your Lord from preparing a table for you and him and others that are his sheep. No matter what they want to do, they can't steal that peace and joy at his table. So... All right, I'm going to go into this. is called Grateful Hearts, and this is an ebook that I have the file I'll put on here, a link to it. But it's from In Touch Ministries and Charles Stanley. He he opens up with for every season, for everything a season, and in everything prayer. Um. <clears throat> Be grateful in everything. Gratitude comes easily when everything is going our way, but 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, in everything give thanks. I almost titled this giving thanks instead of thanksgiving. 
<laughs> but giving thanks. When's the last time you thank God for the breath that you just had? For 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 the blessings, not even material blessings, but the blessings of life and friendship and family and their life and their health. We take it for granted. This includes both good and hard times, but when we don't understand why God allows us to go through suffering and trials, we may let our situa situation extinguish a grateful spirit. Instead of rejoicing and praising God for who he is and what he's done for us, we focus on our pain and confusion and begin to doubt the Lord and his word. However, when we choose to be thankful in every situation, despite our feelings, we'll reap many benefits. There are two prominent passages that speak about gratitude in the believer's life. As the one I just read, 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, it says, In everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. The Lord desires that we have a grateful spirit, no matter our circumstances. Even in the midst of pain or hardship, we can always thank him for our salvation, his presence, and his work in our lives. Paul Learn to be content in all seasons, in all circumstance. You know what that does? Is it means that we're, we're not finding our contentment outside of what God is doing inside of us. So this, the world, our circumstances, the things around us, the people, the haters, the, the, those that persecute us, they can't change are content if it's in Christ. Ephesians 5, 12 says, always giving thanks for all things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father. Although we are told to thank the Father for all things, this never includes anything that is contrary to God's nature or his commands. However, we can thank him for whatever he allows in our lives that is according to his sovereign will, knowing that he promises to work everything for good to those who, who love him and are called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28, one of my favorite verses. Have you thought about that? You know, I often say, he promises to work everything for the good of those who love him. And I often don't go the next and. <laughs> are called according to his purpose. What have you been called to? See, it goes back to, have you, have you picked up that call? Did you send them to voicemail? Did you send them to maybe two years from now? Did you send them once I'm through this job or once I get financially stable, once I get settled in my new job or house or this relationship or whatever it is, then... I'll take his call. And see, the thing is, is he, 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 he makes the call. And what it says is we are to answer the call. So why should we be grateful to God in everything? It, it continually uh, makes us aware that we are walking in his presence, which contributes to a godly life. As believers, we will never walk alone because the Holy Spirit lives within us. Gratitude reminds us of his presence and motivates us to respond in a godly manner by seeking to view our pain and trouble from his perspective, perceive how he is working through the situation and relying upon his promises. No matter what happens throughout the day, we can thank him knowing that our all-loving um, omnipotent, omnis, um, <laughs> omniscient, God is helping us walk through it. Gosh, these big words. Um, God, gratitude, I'm gonna focus on gratitude now. Gratitude motivates us to look for Lord's purpose in everything that happens. You know, what I thought was going to be the death of me was actually my saving grace. That's one of the words from Zach 
uh, what's his name? Zach. Hmm. Mine's going blank. I'll think of it in a minute. But one of his songs, he says, you know, what I thought was going to be the death of me was my saving grace. Maybe it wasn't Zach. Maybe it's Luke Combs. Okay, Luke, go on and say that. But we've all had those times where literally it was sent by the enemy to destroy us, to kill our spirit, to crush our spirit, or better yet, if we don't have a spirit, we haven't received a spirit, it, see, God says, I am still here. Call, call upon me. I'm here. I hold my hand out to you. Will you take my hand? Because, see, once you're in Christ, you can't be destroyed. You can be perplexed. You can be a lot of different things persecuted, but not destroyed. Being grateful brings us to submission to God's will when we're suffering in pain and heartache. I, I'll be honest with you right now, is that often it's so ironic to me that when I'm hurting, when I'm in pain, it truly takes me to this place where like, why are you allowing this, Lord? Why? Like, what did, what did I do to deserve this? And then we just get caught in that pain and see what he does by his wounds, we have been healed. See, he's saying, look, come to me. I want to bind up those broken pieces of your heart. I want to give you a new heart. I want to show you grace. I want, to, I want you to find life and abundance in me. I want you to depend upon me, not this world. And let me take your pain and instead of putting it on to others, your kids or your work uh, buddies or your friends or your family, let me show you how to transform it. You transform it by giving it to me. I will take your pain. I will take your, your sins. I will take all the burdens away. So, um, <clears throat> being thankful reminds us of our continual dependence upon the Lord. This is one of the biggest things because often when we, life is going good, we, we come into this se season of a blessing. We tend to turn back to our old ways, to say, unfortunately, because we lose the gratitude that the Lord has blessed us with. And it's easy to come back into that world of materialism or, or not having what I want or not having enough of what I need to say. And you become greedy, you become materialistic, and you become ungrateful. Gratitude helps us trust the Lord when we don't understand why. Although God hasn't promised to explain why we go through pain on hardship, he has promised to be with us and enable us to face it. Thanksgiving reminds us that we don't have to understand the situation. We just have to be obedient in the process. You're not going to understand the ways of the Lord. I'll be completely honest. His ways are higher. His ways are different than ours. And I do know that going back to, um, where was that? Going back to um, Romans, is it, I just read from it. I did it. Oh, sorry. Verse 28 saying, um, he has promised to bring good from even our worst experiences. I'm a living testament to that. I came into a, a, a season of hurt in 2015 that I didn't even know was possible. Like hurt on two ends, betrayal, hurting those that are my family, 
and I just said, this is it. I don't, I had dark seasons where I just like, I, I'd rather just not. And he kept calling my name. And you know, the thing was, is I was all by myself, but I really wasn't. He was there. He called out to me. He said, Jay, I know you've been baptized. I know you've been in the church all your life. But there, there's not really a dependence on me. There's not a relationship here. I am your father. I love you. I care for you. And see, this heartbreak is going to cause you to, to, to reach two different ways. You can keep trying to, to do it your way. You can make yourself a victim or you can say, you know what, Lord, thank you. I accept it. And I don't want to cause pain to others because all that does is cause more pain. Lord, show me what to do with my pain. And it wasn't a fast process. There were times where I would wake up and I didn't want to forget the pain. But through, through his steadfastness, his patience with me, he, he molded me and he shaped me and he taught me and he led me. And I'll never forget it still to this day. So what we feel is going to kill us may be actually what God is doing to find life in him alone. All right, so this I'm going to send out this um, ebook, but I wanted to just re remind you of the benefits of gratitude. It keeps us continually aware that we're walking in God's presence. This contributes to a godly lifestyle. It motivates us to look for the Lord's purpose in everything in our lives, even if we don't understand what He's doing, thanking Him and lifts the burden. I don't know, time after time after time, either jobs, relationships, uh, no's, closed doors, where I was like, you know, Lord, I, I, <laughs> I'm doing all I can. I mean, I, I'm trying to, to, I'm trying to do your will. And I really felt like I was pursuing the right things, but see, they weren't God. They were good, but they weren't God. And why he should close those doors, I don't know. Why he called me to leave a profession, I don't know. Why? But I did, because I know it was his voice, and he told me that. And everybody, out of, out of good, um, you know, good a good place in their heart that care for me were like, I don't know if this is, you sure that's God saying this? And I'm like, yes, he's called me to this. So I, I go out into ministry uh, full time. And let's just say he was preparing me because I've always thought like, hey, you know, life will be, will be greater to say because I'll be able to do ministry all the time and um, and I'll have, you know, I'll have support, in which I do have support, but, it, you know, it takes a while to build it. And then I see this job right down the road for me and I'm like, hmm, it's teaching. It's right down the road, good opportunity. Lord, I don't know, are you calling me back to this? You know, I really, I really asked him, it's like, I was really worried, like, am I disobeying the Lord? And I kept hearing yes, like, no, like, I'm not, this is where I want you to go. And see, he took me from somewhere and put me somewhere else. But the in-between is a test, it's a... It's a continual dependence on the Lord. I don't know where I'm going to get payment. 
or I don't know where I'm going to get money or find money to pay my bills. But Lord, I'm here. Lights are still on. And it's like, I had to truly trust him with everything. Continually reminds us that he is our God and motivates us to tell others about him, just like that. Why do I do videos that I do? Sometimes I don't even know. <laughs> I'm like, why, Lord, am I doing this? You know, why, why? And it's the spirit in me. Instead, I should just be saying, Lord, why do I get to do this? How can, how can I be, what an honor, right? And it's a gratefulness. It's a two positions there of I have to and instead of I get to. And I'm honored by that. Um, it is essential. Gratitude is essential for rejoicing in the midst of suffering. When the bottom drops out of our lives and everything looks dark, songs of praise and thanksgiving restore our hope, assuring us that God is the light in our darkness. He remove, Gratitude removes anxiety. Gratitude can drive out worry. It's literally scientific as well. It shows that 21 days of like truly of, of gratitude journaling, of being grateful, of focusing on gratitude will, will clear your mind. It will renew your mind and rewire it. Gratitude keeps our focus on the Lord. The situation may not change, but our attitude towards it will. That's the truth. It energizes us physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. A spirit of thanksgiving is a result of remembering all God has done for us. God chose us before the foundation of the world. We are indwelt and sealed by the Holy Spirit. We are eternally secure. We have been given gifts of the Spirit. We have an intimate relationship with the Lord. We have the blessing of God's atonement through Christ and total forgiveness of our sins. We have the peace of God in our hearts. The Lord loves us unconditionally. We're never distanced from the presence of God. The Lord provides for our needs. We've been given over or we've been given the word of God, the source of all knowledge and understanding. We have his divine protection each day. We have the promise of a bodily resurrection and we have an eternal home in heaven and the promise of resurrection. So if you need something to be thankful for, I just name some. And I need those reminders sometimes because we, we don't forget or we, we don't, we tend to forget those things I just said. Like, do you understand right now that anything in this world would not be together or be um, be possible without God? Like, yes, you make good money. Yes, you have gifts. Where do you think those gifts come from? And that's the difference. See, I know that I <laughs> do nothing to to uh, earn God's favor. But instead, all I have to do or can do is be open to his gifting and to be um, carried through and given the power to and given the, the ability to communicate his words. So... It says, um, we experience the Holy Spirit within us. We, Although the disciples have been with Jesus three years, they were not equipped to complete the work in Jerusalem or complete the work he had given them until the Spirit came to indwell and empower them. That's why Christ told them to stay in Jerusalem until they received the promised Spirit in Acts 1-4. This same Spirit who came to them also lives within every person who has trusted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. He's the one who opens our eyes. 
he helping us understand that Jesus died in our place so our sins could be forgiven and we could be saved. When we repent and believe in Christ, his Holy Spirit seals us as children of God and no one can ever break that seal. Jesus' resurrection makes our salvation certain, secure, and unbreakable. Hopefully these truths, we just need to be reminded of them. We can, we can have peace in the midst of most difficult times. It says, before his crucifixion, Jesus told his disciples, peace I will leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. John 14, 27. He never forsakes us, but sits at the Father's right hand, working on our behalf. Jesus understands our weaknesses and is always with us to take us through our difficulties and help us become the people he desires us to be. What's up, Jeremy? What's up, Scott? Good to see you, buddy. So, um, this whole thing about, you know, why I relate with Paul so much is that he understood his weak well he didn't really understand his weaknesses but he, he prayed more than three times for God to remove his thorn we don't know what his thorn is often I don't know what my thorn is but I know this that where I'm weak he's strong so going to him about those weaknesses doesn't scare me it's because, hey, it's where I'm weak, you're strong, Lord. And I don't know maybe where my weaknesses are, but you do. Search me, Lord. Search my heart. Reveal to me those weaknesses in your timing. Maybe, may, maybe right now isn't the time. Maybe that thorn is what keeps us humble. Because if you remove that thorn, then, hey, we might become perfected by ourselves and not him. Like, have you ever thought about that? Like, the most weak people are the ones God chooses. It blows my mind, but it also, like, yes. And it's like, he doesn't go for the powerful. No, he goes for the powerless. And he's going to show those powerless people and the people that thought they were powerless, he's going to show them a new power. And those people will, will allow him to work through them and they'll be like, I don't know where this came from. <laughs> I don't know how I got here. But I'm here by the grace of God. And it's a humbleness. It's nothing I've achieved or done, but it's been done for me and unto me. Until I'm called home, I will not be perfect. But in him, I am perfect. So it's a question of where do you abide? Where do you live? Where, what's your home? Jesus always emphasized home. He always emphasized, you know, Joshua says, as for me, as for as for me and my home, we will follow the Lord. Like, I can't speak for my neighbor. I can't speak for others and how they live their life. I'm not called to do that. I'm called to, to look in and is my horse, or is my horse, I said my horse, is my house in order? So many people they 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 say you know <laughs> your house is a wreck or your your you know things at home are just not right so I go here to escape and it's like that's not guess what you're gonna go back home and it's gonna be the same home but you should be humbly going before the Lord and saying look I I don't know what my home has become. There's strangers in it. I'm a stranger to my husband. He's a stranger to me and my kids, I don't even know what's going on. They're always on their 
devices are in the room. And honestly, I don't know what to do, Lord. Do you not think he would respond to that? But see, what I just did is say, I can't do it. I know I'm not in the right place, Lord. So at first, I must get myself in line with you. And from that overflow, I know that you will lead me. And others will hopefully follow my lead. If not, then I still have to be who the Lord called me to be. All right. We can face death courageously, boldly, and confidently. Jesus is alive and is the source of eternal life. If he is our savior, we will enter immediately into his holy presence when we die. Second Corinthians 5, 8. Because Jesus lives, we never truly die, but live forever with him. That's powerful. Um, so many of us push it to... <laughs> When I die, or right before I die, you know, I'll get right with the Lord. I hope you do. I'm not saying that that ain't possible. I mean, you got the sinner at the cross, right? That was crucified with Jesus. But see, what he was able to do <laughs> is acknowledge Jesus. He was able to know that he was the truth. And he had been getting it wrong. And you know what the Lord said to him, or Jesus said? I will remember you, and you will be with me in paradise today. Wait, how many how many church services did that guy go to? Wait. <laughs> uh he was a criminal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, is he married? Did he, is he single? Does he like have um, multiple affairs. Mm, well, Jesus knows. <laughs> Jesus knows. So therefore, I don't have to decide who's going to go where or even question the will of God and Jesus. So, um, yes. Last thing, it's a prayer of thanksgiving and praise. So I'm gonna go to in prayer. I'm gonna read here if we got any prayer requests. I don't see that. So um, this is a prayer of thanksgiving and praise. Dear Heavenly Father, forgive us for finding it so hard to be grateful at times. We look around and see the blessings of others and lose our sight of our own. And so we go searching for treasure in the wrong places. We look to the world, to governments and churches, to family and friends and loved ones, and even to ourselves to find our worth when we ought to lift our eyes up to you, our Heavenly Father. You have endowed us with a rich, eternal treasure, all the kindness, goodness, mercy, and love we could ever need is in you. You, creator of heaven and earth, can move mountains to provide the physical resources we need. And as the king of all kings, legions of all angels, of angels are always at your back and are your back and call to protect us. No one can take us before our time. You are a good father who lavishes us with gifts and fills our cups to overflowing. And when we think about so great a treasure, how could we not be grateful? How could we not want to give you praise and glory? And how could we not want to share such an amazing gift with the world? Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. That's a, a prayer from that was written down. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I just wanted to do a little gratitude. I need it. I remember um, I created a gratitude journal. If you want one, I can send you one or a PDF. 
And it truly, I did it because I created this journal and I did it for students and I ended up doing my own for 21 days straight. And I'll tell you what, it, it changed it changed my perspective. It brought me back into my dependence and knowing that all goodness comes from the Lord. Nowhere else, not of my doing, but His. And I, 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 I think sometimes it's like they won't name three things that you're grateful for. Often it's not, it's not um, quality, quantity, it's quality. Like focus on one thing a day. Like I, I wrote some of these down. They're not material things. They're, 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 I don't know what they are. <laughs> they're different. They're, I, I said love, not romantic, but divine, unconditional love. And that was July 16th of that year. And what I was praying for all day and what I was trying to focus on was the love of God. The love of God. And, and, being filled with his love and then allowing that to overflow into everything I did. And then the next day was freedom. Like I, I have freedom to love God, freedom to spread his word, freedom to be, and I have freedom for who I thought I was before I was set free in Christ. I went on to creation, family, the word, mercy, work, Counsel, family, sisters, forgiveness, community, Lord's conviction, church, my heart, rest, timing, wisdom, leadership, caregiving, and kingdom. So, I encourage you, whatever you do, you can do three things if that's what you want to do. But sometimes less is more. And what I know what this did to me, it wasn't like I was focusing on the next thing. It was like I was focusing on one thing. And that's what I said before we even got started. I said, you fight distraction, not by trying to, to stop everything or, or focusing on your distractions, but instead focusing on one thing. And that's God. So this week, focus on that. It's a great week for Thanksgiving. Spend this whole week in an attitude of gratitude so when you get there Thursday, you can be living from a grateful heart. You can, you can show humility. You can, you can say, um, I'm loved. And you know what? Because I'm loved, I'm going to love you even those family members you don't want to. So, uh, hope everybody is well. If you want to join our group, please. It's, um, I'm not gonna beg anymore. But we have uh, eight or nine of us across the nation join each Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Central. You go simply to Christ Digital Live. If you have any questions or problems getting there, uh, you can message me here. Or you can send me an email at j at inspirations.org anytime and we will get you connected. And I think you will find um, peace, comfort, support, love, and, and encouragement. And um, we all need those things. So you will find that in our group. I love each and every one of you. Thanks for tuning in. If you're going to watch Yellowstone, enjoy. I am as well. And I uh, hope you all have a great week. Um, it's a short week for most of us. So you know what? Get all that Thanksgiving in um, those two days or three days you got to work before. Like, be thankful that you have a job. Be thankful that you have a home to go home to. Be thankful you have a wife or a husband. Be thankful for your kids. Be thankful for our Savior, Jesus, that we're given anything. I love y'all. May God's peace be yours, and don't be a grace hog. Good night.